Welcome back to Bumblebee. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters, and here are the top 10 darkest predictions in history that might come true. Who knows? Let's dive in. Starting our list off at number 10, grandchildren can't read. All right, here's a fun one to kick our day off here. Back in 1951, when a new TV station was being constructed, a writer from Time Magazine had this wild prediction for the future, and it's been haunting me ever since. They believe our grandkids will not know how to read. Books just won't be a thing, apparently. Yeah, all because of televisions. Yeah, that thing you're currently watching me on, right here, this little box that I live in. All because of me and that box. You're welcome. The writer believes that, quote, our people are becoming less literate by the minute. And in the zero sum game of recreational hours, TV would eat up more and more of the time people once spent reading books and thinking thoughts. This prediction sadly goes on and they say that by the 21st century, our people will be squint-eyed, hunchbacked, and fond of the dark. Awesome. My back's already toast and I'm a big fan of the dark, so. Almost there. Hit that thumbs up for an illiterate hunchback future in the dark. Here we go. Number nine. Human Cyclops. Okay, we'll keep this future list on a positive note. Back in 1933, Dr. Thomas Hall Shasted explained in an article that the future of humans will be Cyclops. And no, I don't mean the X-Men with laser vision. I mean the one-eyed humanoid being. That one, yeah. Dr. Shasted believes the eye should be in the center of the face right below the forehead. Also like one unibrow, that'd be cool. The human eye originally evolved to see far into the distance, but as the modern human reads, writes, repairs watches, cuts gems, examines photos, and so on and Danforth, the Cyclopean peeper would evolve to accommodate these close range tasks and pastimes, end quote. Awesome, I feel like the only cool thing about humans having one eye in the future, honestly, the only thing I can think of is that now we can bring back New Year's Eve glasses and wear them, you know? We had them until 2009, right? Then the eye holes didn't make any more sense. Now if we have one eye, 2044, 2096, we're set, we're good. New Year's Eve's fun again, we have props. Number eight, technology. It's no secret that Nikola Tesla was certainly a man ahead of his time, right? He is known for his brain and scientific advancements and creation, so it's no wonder he was able to have some incredibly accurate predictions as well. Years, of course, before they were even close to becoming reality. More than 60 years before the first cell phone and 90 years before Wi-Fi even existed, he is said to have predicted the existence of these two modern staples. Although I just put up number four. He is quoted saying, it will soon be possible to transmit wireless messages all over the world so simply that any individual can carry and operate his own apparatus. I mean, in our world, it's hard to imagine these things not existing, but back then, it was really more of an unbelievable feat than we can fully realize. But is this the future? Have we fully arrived or is this something darker? Are we gonna become cyborgs with like, you know, our own iPad in our head or a chip? Oh no, he's talking about a chip. Number seven. Frogmen. Okay, this might explain things. This might explain my lankiness and love for swimming and frogs. Here we go. Frogmen. Ribbit. I don't know why it's so aggressive. Frogmen. Sounds scary. The perfect job for you. I don't know. Maybe me. Maybe I might quit tomorrow and become a frogman. In 1966, the Rand Corps addressed food shortages and how future problems may or may not look. So the solution was to eat more kelp. That's how humans will stay alive. Yeah, these massive fields of kelp were planned to have undersea farmers, these literal frogmen who live in submerged bunkhouses, growing kelp. The kelp would ideally be ground into powder and then regenerated chemically to taste like anything we want. McDonald's nuggets, easy, every single day, why not? While at the same time, stocking up on protein, right? It's a win-win. Yeah, kelp is great, but do we think we're gonna replace each and every food with it? I hope not, but what about those frog jobs? Any of those opening up? Number six, Harold Camping. Harold, like many others I'm sure on this list, was obsessed with trying to predict the end of the world. Imagine actually nailing it though. Then what, you have like two seconds of like, yes! Then you're dead. Harold Camping tried a few times, but thankfully he was wrong. He publicly predicted the end of the world 12 times. The man even published a book in 1992 titled 1994 question mark, where he predicted of course that the end of the world would arrive sometime that year. Given the fact that I was born that year and I'm alive and well and almost 28, we're good to go. Another failed prediction for our doomsday was May 21st, 2011, exactly 7,000 years after the biblical flood. Weird. But when no flooding occurred in such a manner, Harold readjusted his prediction, saying that his math was actually off this entire time. Actually end on October 21st, 2011 instead. Yeah, I think I was at a Halloween party that weekend. I think we were all fine. Imagine the hype this guy felt though. He's probably so concerned all those times. Poor guy. Let's hope he never nails it. Stay losing. Hit that thumbs up for other people to not 
get things right. I don't know, you know what I'm saying. Number five, the prophet hen of Leeds. Nostradamus who? We got a prophet hen, let's talk. That's right, a barnyard animal was warning humanity of the end of the world. This all began in 1806 in Leeds, England. There lived a chicken who laid quite the egg. Yes, yeah, spoilers ahoy on this egg. Apparently on these eggshells were messages that read, Christ is coming. Yeah, I'm more of a scrambled egg type of guy, but those ones, not bad, pretty impressive. This hen got pretty famous, obviously, once word got out. People began to travel far and wide to see for themselves this miracle hen. And then next came the panic. Yeah, everyone began worrying about this eternal doom. This egg was shitting out bad messages about our you know, doomed life. I don't know, this guy kept going with the eggs. But fear not, this chicken was in fact a fraud. Well, no, the owner was a liar. He was writing messages on the egg. But still, guilty by association, pal. Read a book, you're out of here. If you're an accomplice, read a book. Get out of here. I'm surprised it took that long to catch on, honestly. I had to throw a silly one in for a halfway point, but who knows, a prophet hen could be out there waiting right now. Number four, Millerism. Okay, talk about spoilers, here we go. Religious leader William Miller started preaching in 1831 that the world was going to end. Now, according to him, the end times would come within the second coming of Christ and that he would return in 1843. Again, we love a heads up. Thanks, that's a proper prediction right there. Now, this prediction led Miller to gaining 100,000 followers in real life. Yeah, much worse than Instagram. And they all believed that in the end, they too would be carried off to heaven with William Miller himself. The dream. Ah, uh, yes, all of us in William. Now what? Obviously, the world didn't end in 1843 and Miller recalculated and instead, predicted the end of the world, and Jesus, of course, his second coming, what happened the following year in 1844. Documents were found in one of Miller's followers who wrote about his experience waiting for the predicted events to unfold. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, this guy seemed a little upset that Christ didn't return or the world didn't end. What a weird thing to be upset about. The follower, a man named Henry Emmons wrote, and I quote, I waited all Tuesday, and dear Jesus did not come. I lay for two days without any pain, yet sick with disappointment, end quote. Sorry, man. Hey, one day the world will end. That was back in 1843. Yeah, he's probably dead. He's probably dead. I was gonna be like, hey, if you're watching this. No, he's long gone. Doesn't have YouTube, for sure. Number three, True Way. True Way religion mixes Christianity, Buddhism, Taiwanese folk religion, and UFO conspiracy theories all together. Yeah, just a potluck. How fun is that one? The leader, Han Ming Chen, believed that the end of the world was near, as do everyone else on this list. He preached that God would appear on US national television on Channel 18, not HBO, Channel 18, so specific. He believed this would happen on March 25th, 1988, to announce that he would be returning to Earth in the following week. That is a wild prediction right there. Of course, it never happened, because we'd hear about this, and obviously. But the following year, he then preached that millions of devil spirits and a massive flood would result in the mass extinction of the human population. So nice, you're either gonna die in a flood or by demons. 50-50 on the horrible demise scale. Now it sounded pretty frightening to some, but Han Ming Chen had a plan to save all of those who followed him and his beliefs. Nice, how convenient, we love a backup plan. All you have to do is pay a rather large fee and then board a spacecraft disguised as a cloud. That would of course then be sent to rescue them. This was before the movie Nope, so I don't know how I feel about this anymore. Number two. Apophis. We thought the world was gonna end in 2012. The Mayan calendar tipped us off and they even made a movie about it. Yeah, they made a movie and John Cusack got a paycheck because of the Mayan calendar. They have no idea, how crazy is that? Well, we might be seeing another disaster movie in eight years from now. The asteroid Apophis is in the category of potentially hazardous asteroids. And on April 13th, 2029, it will barely miss Earth in its passing. And around two billion people will witness the possible end with their naked eye. Yeah, that's how close it is that people are gonna see it. Scientists were actually unsure about if this thing would hit or not, and even to this day, it, it could. It really depends. Earth's gravitational pull might just influence this near miss. Yeah, fingers crossed. Nice hopeful number two before our end of the list there. And finally, number one, forever young. Okay, organ transplant is a really important part of medicine nowadays, and it truly has saved countless lives. I mean, we're now at the point where we're making artificial organs that may actually be completely functional, which is fascinating in itself. That's insane. But what if I told you that 300 years before the first major organ transplant ever occurred, there was someone out there predicting the entire thing. And his name was Robert Boyle. Robert Boyle was known as the father of modern chemistry. He made a list of predictions, rather these hopes of what he thought medicine could potentially achieve in the future. And this is one thing that he thankfully got right. Other predictions he made includes the prolongation of life and the recovery of youth. Yeah, maybe that's Paul Rudd's secret. 
I don't know. At some point, he's gotta call it. You know, it can't be around here forever. Like 400 years, I'm sick of lineups. I'm done. Those are the top 10 darkest predictions in history that might come true. If you want a part two, comment down below and I shall return. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters. See you next time on Bumblebee. It's August. This is the darkest I'm gonna be. I thought more freckles would pop out. Just this big guy here. Uh, bah, 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 bah. What am I even saying? I'm talking about a chicken. Uh,